there. I'm making sure it's nice and warm. I'm going to move uh, our eggplant. Yep, we have our sauce here for that. For you guys to, uh, for you guys to fight over, right? So now we'll work on our uh, fish and chips. And if you look at our batter now, Yeah, we're, we've got some thickness. thickness to it, okay? We've got some nice thickness to it. That flour has um, absorbed some of that liquid, and we should be okay. You want the pancake batter, Yep, same kind of, um, a little thicker than pancake batter. Um, pancake batter is uh, should be pourable, right? Um, this is a little thicker than that. It's stick. It's yeah, you want it to stick and, and, and adhere. So, I have my uh, tilapia filet. <laughs> and for a fish and chips, what I'm going to look for, you could do whole filets, whole pieces, like, you know, this size. Um, what I kind of like is, like, finger size. You know, finger size. Yes. So, I'm going to split <laughs> Split my tilapia lengthwise and then start separating them. So all tilapia got the little red arm. Yep, that's from the skin. A lot of fish do. Okay. So Man, can we get a free lunch like this once a month? I'm just going to take a little bit of our salt. All right, we want it seasoned. A little bit of pepper. Okay. What do you have, Donna? 375. 375, yes. Is salt and pepper the like combination of like seasoning? Because this one, everything, you make carrots, you make fries, you make salt and pepper. Mm -hmm. um, always. Um, you can't underestimate salt and pepper. They're literally, um, I can't think of uh, anything in classical cooking that you don't season with salt and pepper. A stock we don't season we, because we want it neutral, it's going into other things. Um, but we still put it seasoning in. We put peppercorns in it, we put bay leaf in it, we put thyme in it. So, um, yeah, you're going to, you know, salt and pepper. In you know everything, you might have some uh, like in some cuisines you have kind of a substitute for the salt, like in Asian cuisines, soy and that kind of thing that act as a substitute. Um, but for the most part, um, you see salt, and pepper, and everything. Now I want my food to have a good coating of the batter. Now a little trick with batter and deep frying is uh, when you go into the fryer. Chris, do me a favor here. This lid, careful, Comes off. Be, I don't think it's warm, but if you grab both sides of it and lift up, it'll pull up. That way you can see what I'm doing here. When you go into the fryer, you want to hold on to it. Let it go into the oil, hold it for a few seconds, wave it back and forth, and then let it go. Right? Because if I just let it go in, it's going to sink to the bottom and it's going to cook sticking to the bottom. The batter is going to wrap around the grate on the bottom and stick there. Whereas if I let it, hold it for a few seconds and let that batter start to cook, it might sink, but it's not going to stick to the bottom. Okay? So I go in, give it a little wave. And I'm letting go. Now I'm going to try one first, right, to make sure my batter 
is where it needs to be. Um, fairly confident that it's okay, but I want to be sure, right? Before I start breading, you know, all of our fish. Now, once it goes in, um, after 10 seconds or so, you want to give it a little nudge and make sure it's not sticking to the bottom, okay? We see Ooh. getting nice texture there, okay? I think I'm pretty, pretty good with my batter, so I'm going to continue on. fire dumping these into the fryer. Okay, I'm going to give it a second, give it a nudge, make sure it comes off the bottom. And then it's going to float. I don't know if you guys can see it in the camera or not, uh, but they're floating now. wide enough. Don't <laughs> <laughs> be the first time. <laughs> okay, so I'm moving these around. I'm making sure I'm getting um, both sides nice and coated. Something breaded where the breading falls off a lot. Here you might be gone. Um, you know, on a commercial fryer, um, you know it's good because you have a lot of things that can settle to the bottom, and you can keep kind of reusing that oil. That's why I like a lot of stores reuse it over. Sure, you want to get as much use out of it as you can, and um, you know there are things you can do to extend that life. Filtering it, like every night, filter it. You know, and you'll extend the, the life a lot. So we've got some nice golden color there. Nice and crisp. Good. Now once these come out, I'm going to get some fries in there. Those. I want my salt handy. A little seasoning as it's hot. What's that? Cut your knees up already, huh? Bet knees. Bet knees. I swipe these from the restaurant. Oh, okay. So you guys have. Uh, Seen batonets cut for two weeks now. And we're looking for nice, nice crispness, nice golden color. Okay, my little pieces are cooking, you know, nice and fast. That's good. The good fish and chips, man. And that's only awesome. one piece of fish. That's one piece of fish, wow. right? And yesterday we talked about how cheap tilapia is, right? Yeah. yeah. So one piece of fish, and you can get a nice portion out of that, right? So all that you give it to somebody for a fish and chips, 
you know, you're charging 10, 12 bucks, 15 bucks for our fish and chips. Well, one piece of fish. <laughs> it's called stretching it. <laughs> and make them look like they got a lot. Cut it up. My fries are drained. Notice all the bubbling, that's all the moisture. The fish, um, now I'm kind of, I kind of know, you know, you could feel it too. You could feel it that it's firm. Okay? Well, fish is and this, easy. this cooks pretty quick. The fish is usually done before it's brown, right? Fish yeah. don't take long to cook. Batter tastes pretty good. Okay. So now, wax paper. Well, you see, um, down in the restaurant, um, we serve the fries in a paper cone, you know, and traditional fish and chips, you might see them served in, uh, you know, newspaper, you know. Um, and like real news, you know, it used to be real newspaper, and then I guess they figured, well, they're poisoning uh, everyone with ink. Um, you know, and they went to just paper, you know. Um, but uh, we have parchment paper here, and I'm going to show you a, a little trick on how to um, get it into a cone shape. And there's um, a couple different uses for this, actually, besides putting french fries in it. So I have a triangular shape, all right? So I just cut my parchment paper into a triangular shape, okay? And with the, the short point towards you, you're going to grab one point, say the right point. I'm grabbing it and I'm turning it over so that point lines up with my bottom point. Like this. Okay, so I'm grabbing it, flipping it over. It's hard to do upside down, but. So that bottom point is lining up like that, okay? So I line that up, right, and notice here I'm getting a point right on this end. I take my other end, I wrap it around, take it around the cone, okay, to keep that point. And you want to really want to tighten it up. All right? So they didn't really cut these as well as they could have. You want them nice and um, uniform triangle there. Um, but you want to keep a little point there. All right, so you have all three sides converging to make a point. You have all the ends up here. So you can take those ends and you basically fold them down to keep your cone together. Right? So now Ooh. you could use these to put your fries in there and serve it on a plate. You, know, you dress it up a little bit. Right? But our other use for them, for the bag, and the term for this is a uh, coronet. 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 Like a horn. Like a coronet horn. <laughs> no, not clarinet. Coronet. Coronet. <laughs> but the other use for them, right, is for um, piping icing and writing on cakes, right? When you write on a cake, generally you don't use a big pastry bag. You use a little bag like this. So your chocolate or your icing can go on here. You would fold it up like this. You can squeeze you can it. Cut a little bit of that tip off, and now you just squeeze and write. Pardon me? Parchment. Parchment paper. Parchment? P A R C H M E N C. Good spelling. Big fishing. Yep, we're going to see that uh, next week. It's called N Papayo. Good steaming method. Oh, look at my fries. I want my golden, you know, nice golden French fry. Looking for a bowl. I'm going to make my little coronet. 
far enough. I'm going to try to make a little bigger one. And um, tape doesn't work on parchment, guys. It doesn't stick. Okay. That's what makes it a great, you know, we bake with parchment paper because it's non-stick, right? So you'll, you'll get very frustrated trying to tape parchment paper. It doesn't work. Uh, test one, make sure it's done. Well, it does. French fried it actually tastes like potato. It's nice. Right. Uh, not like, uh, you know, I don't want a bad mouthy McDonald's or anything. But, uh, <laughs> okay, now, very important. We hear that, right? You yes. hear it? That's what you should hear. Chris. If you don't hear that in your French fry, you did something wrong. Wait a second. Pick up. Alright, so what we'll do. Alright. Put our fries on the plate. Stop, this is this beer right here. Oh, I'll explain that in a second. Okay, nice fish and chips on the side. Try to sell. Take some of our tartar. Okay. Fish and chips. Now the traditional uh, English Irish accompaniment to hold on guys, hold on guys. To fish and chips is um, malt vinegar. This is malt vinegar, right? So, uh, you know. Would you put it on the fish? Fish or the chips, right? Take it, give it a little nice liberal douse. Do you like that? I don't want to. Mm hmm. I love it. Right? Make that part of the scene. <laughs> Oh, yep, 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 yep,